Michael Klein is a senior analyst for Drum Cusack, the firm month, specializing in risk Obama assessment. How much is fact and how much is fiction? Suicide bombings have been out of the territory that they held by the shifting to more traditional terrorist tactics as they've been routed out of the territory that they held by the counterinsurgency. As they do that, they shift towards suicide bombings and suicide bombings. It's true that a lot of these young girls are really troubling young girls. That's been a really troubling legacy of kidnapping. Is the case, case where Boko Haram is that strong, is that strong or Nigeria, or Nigeria is, is just, just that weak? I think the key word here is strategy. Boko Haram has a strategy. It's been portrayed as a ragtag group of gunmen, but they are very adaptable. The question is, does the government have a strategy? The colossus of the Nigerian government, not adaptable. They haven't been able to adapt their conventional warfare approach to the asymmetric and uh, terroristic suicide bombings and attacks that Boko Haram can uh, uh, use as it shifts into the state. It's a sign that maybe they have not been as decimated as people thought. There are three at least real reasons why we see the sudden escalation. One is that there's a new president in town and they want to hit him hard before he can stand up. Two, they've adapted their strategy um, to the conventional counterinsurgency um, techniques of uh, the government to uh, retreat from holding territory towards more asymmetric warfare that relies on sleeper terror cells more in the, more, the model of Al-Qaeda. The third uh, reason is that we're in the middle of the holy month of Ramadan, and that is actually an ISIL process. Okay, so what are the implications of his win on Nigeria's two militant movements, Boko Haram in the north, and the Niger Delta media uh, militancy in the South. Right, so the, Nigeria basically has two historic militant movements. One everyone knows about right now is Boko Haram, that's which is raging in the northeast of the country, um, the region uh, where Bahari himself is from. And there's also a latent Niger Delta militancy, which people might remember more from the early 2000s. A lot of the disbanded militant groups uh, in the south have threatened to take to the streets or produce more unrest or violence um, in protest of Bahari's candidacy. But I think ultimately we believe that the leaders of those militant groups will be waiting to see what concessions they can get from a new Bihari administration um, before making more attacks. After all, the president that originally took the brought the Niger Delta militancy under control was the former President Yardwa, who was a Muslim from the same northern region as Bihari. Defeat an incumbent. So what does that say about Nigeria's population, its voters, and, and how their views may have changed dramatically? And, and how has he been able to shed his past as a military ruler? It's a major sign of Nigeria's uh, maturity as a democracy, um, how far it's come just from 1997 when multi-party elections began. Like I said, I think the greatest impact that Bahari has had so far was his election. It's it, his election did more to instill confidence and unite the country than probably anything in the past 18 years. Uh, Nigeria is an extraordinarily young country. 70% of its population is under the age of 30. So uh, starting or getting off on the right foot now in 2015 could mean a lot for its own political development.